All right, ladies and gents, this is our section, um, yeah, chapter nine, section three video covering hyperbolas, okay? So last bit of the conic section that we're gonna talk about, we're gonna get into a quad review the next few days, but today we're gonna... All right, guys, chapter nine, section three, hyperbolas. A hyperbola is a set of all points in a plane, the difference of whose distance from two distinct points, the foci, is a positive constant, okay? What you guys need to take away from that, first of all, I think that's the first question on your web assigned, but a hyperbola is like a mirrored parabola. Mirrored parabola. If you notice, here's the like a piece of a parabola, here's the other piece. There's always gonna be a mirror image of parabola. It's either gonna be up and down or sideways, left and right. We'll talk about that in a second. The focus, same as our other <clears throat> equations and, and shapes that we looked at, the focus, your hyperbola is gonna to open towards the focus. If you look at the graph of a hyperbola, these are called the branches, all right? And then there's something really important along here. This is called your transverse axis, all right? You're gonna have a transverse axis that is either vertical or horizontal, all right? The midpoint of the transverse axis is called your center, but if you notice here, guys, along your transverse axis, you have all the important parts. You're gonna have the vertices, you're gonna have the center, and you're also gonna have your foci, which are here and here. So these are the really important parts of a hyperbola that tell you if you're gonna start off with X or if you're gonna start off with Y. All right, so our parabolas, I'm sorry, hyperbolas look like this, all right? We have a horizontal hyperbola that opens sideways, and we have a vertical that opens up and down. All right, all the major things are on the transverse axis. So if you have a horizontal, horizontal hyperbola, all the major stuff is gonna be on this horizontal transverse axis. If you have a vertical, meaning it opens up and down, all the major stuff is on your vertical axis, which is your Y. That's really important for you guys to visualize and to understand. And then you can go from there picking which equation is gonna go with which. These are the equations of our hyperbolas with shifted centers moving left and right. But if you guys notice, <clears throat> your H and your K is still the center point. H and K here, H and K here. So if you have a transverse axis that is horizontal, then you're gonna start with X. If you have a transverse axis that is vertical, you're gonna start with Y. Notice your A squared is the same for both of them, A squared and then B squared. We're gonna find the A's and the B's and the C's and all that. The difference between the equation in an ellipse and a hyperbola is just this middle sign. In a hyperbola, the middle sign is a minus. So here's our equation of our hyperbolas. All right, again, if the transverse axis is horizontal, we're gonna start off with the X coordinate first. If our transverse axis is vertical, we're gonna start with Y first. Now we've talked about the A's and the B's and the C's and all that in other conversations using these same kinds of shapes and different shapes and stuff. But in a hyperbola, you have an A value, you have a B value, and you have a C value. And then you have an equation that kind of connects all of them together. The A value is the distance between, distance between the center and the vertex. So the A value is the distance between the center and the vertex. Your B value is the distance between, distance between your center and your co-vertex, your co-vertices. Those are the ones that aren't on the transverse axis. And then your C value is going to be the distance from the center to the foci, or one of the focuses. So from the center to the foci. Now we can count. Yes, you guys can count these and you can also do it mathematically given the points and stuff like that. So this is all stuff that we're gonna just figure out and we'll be good to go, all right? There are, is going to be something called an asymptote, equation of a line. We'll talk about that where your parabola is gonna get real close to, I mean your hyperbola, excuse me, I keep saying that. Your hyperbola is gonna get real close to, but not touch, and that's okay. 
Now, we talked about a little equation that I said you can use that brings the C value and the A value and the B value all together. And that's going to be C squared equals A squared plus B squared. This is a little different than our ellipse. In our ellipse, it was a minus in the middle. So with our hyperbola, it's going to be a plus. Okay, does that make sense? Everybody good? All right, let's move along. Let's look at this first example. It says, find the standard form of the equation of the hyperbola with foci negative 1, 2, 5, 2, and vertices at 0, 2, and 4, 2. So the first thing you guys should do when you're just given a whole bunch of information, draw yourself a quick little picture. Okay, so I'm going to plot these points. 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, let's plot our points. The first thing I'm going to plot is my foci. I'm going to use purple. So negative 1, 2, and then 5, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 2. All right, these are my foci. And remember, our parabola is going to open towards our foci. Then the next thing I'm going to plot is our vertices. So I'm going to do that in green. So I have a vertex at 0, 2, which is here. And I have one at 4, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, up 2. I'll call those V. Now, I need to find, in order to, to write my equation, I have to have my center and I have to have my A and B. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my transverse axis. And I'm going to say all of my important information is along this horizontal line. So if it's a horizontal transverse axis, then you're going to use the standard form equation x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared, and it's going to be set equal to 1. So let's find all of the stuff, right? The first thing I want to find is the center. Your center point is going to be in between the two vertices. So you can count, or you can say, all right, to find my center, I'm going to find the midpoint of the vertices. The midpoint of vertices. So my vertices are at 0, 2 and at 4, 2. So to find the midpoint, you take the y's and the x's, add them up, divide by 2. So 0 plus 4 divided by 2, comma, 2 plus 2 divided by 2. Well, 4 divided by 2, and then 4 divided by 2. So my center is going to be at 2, comma, 2. This is my h, this is my k. Now I have to find a, the b, and the c. All right, so let's remind ourselves, a is the distance from the center, to the vertex. So if my center is right here at 2, 2, and my vertices are either at 0, 2, or 4, 2, how many spaces away is this point from this point? You can easily count that. You can eyeball it, or you can say, okay, 4 minus 2. But my A value is 2. Do they tell me anything about co-vertices? No. So I'm not going to worry about B right now. But I can figure out what C is. C is the distance from the center to the foci. So here is my center at 2, 2. My foci over here is at 5, 2. Well, how many spaces is it from 2, 2 to 5, 2? It's three spaces. So then if we're going to find our C value, I mean our B value, we would just say C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So C squared equals, oh, let me rewrite that. We'll say 3 squared equals 2 squared plus B squared. 9 equals 4 plus b squared. Subtract 4 from both sides, and you get b squared equals 5. So b is going to be the square root of 5. Square root of 5. Now, in order to write the equation of your ellipse, you have to have your center and your a and your b. Well, we now have all that stuff, so let's just fill everything in. So I have x minus h. Well, the h part of my vertex is 2, quantity squared, over a squared. So a, squared, a is 2, so a squared would be 4. Then I have minus y minus k. Well, what's the k part of my vertex? It's 2. Or center, I should say. I'm sorry. k part of my center is 2. So I have y minus 2 squared over b squared. Well, b is the square root of 5. So if I square the square root of 5, I get 5 equals 1. And there is our equation of our ellipse in standard form. All right, I talked to you a second ago about asymptotes. And I have a formula that we will use to find the asymptotes. But remember, asymptotes are those boundary lines that a graph gets really, 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 really close to but doesn't touch. Okay, it's just an equation of a line, so y equals mx plus b, but 
<clears throat> if you drew a box connecting your co-vertices and your vertices, your asymptotes would be the diagonal lines that intersect in the middle, which we'll talk about a little more in a minute. Here is the asymptotes of a hyperbola equations. Again, if your horizontal transverse axis, if your transverse axis is horizontal, you use this first equation that has B over A. If your asym if your vertical, if your transverse axis is vertical, you use this equation where it's A over B. So again, H and K are your center. You can figure out A and B from your equation in standard form, and then you just plug it into this equation to get a line, which would be Y equals MX plus B. It would be a dotted boundary line that your hyperbola branches get really close to, but they don't actually ever touch. All right, if you're given an equation like this, I'm not asking you to sketch the hyperbola. You're not gonna have to do that, but you can figure out the center and all of the other things, the vertices, the foci, all that stuff. You can figure that out given this equation. First of all, when I look at this, I say, okay, it needs to be equal to one. So if I divide everything by 16, divide by 16 all the way through, I come out with x squared over four minus y squared over 16 equals one. Now this told me a whole lot of stuff. All right, I'm gonna sketch a little picture as we go through here, but this told me a whole lot of stuff. I'm starting off with x squared. Since we're starting off with x, this means this is a horizontal transverse axis. All right, I know that my center is at whatever is being added or subtracted to h and k. Well, in this case, nothing is, so it'd be my center would be at zero, zero. I know that my a value always comes first, so this is a squared, so a would be two. My b value comes second here, so b squared is 16, that means b is four. And if I were to find c, I would say c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So two squared is four, four squared is 16. I get c squared equals 20. So my c value is two root five, two root five. Now, if I asked you guys to tell me what the vertices and the foci were, you could do that, right? I have my center here at zero, zero. I know this is gonna open sideways because it starts off with X in our equation. So let's think about what the A value is. A is the distance from the center to the vertex. So if I wanna know what my vertices are, I go from the center to the vertex. The vertex is gonna be somewhere along here. It's left and right of the center. Well, my A value is two. So if I move two spaces to the right and two spaces to the left, that would give me my vertices. So I would have a vertice at negative two, zero, and I would have a vertice at positive two, zero. Now, if I said to you, okay guys, then find the co-vertices, all right? Co-vertices, those are the ones that are not on your major. They're gonna be on the opposite. That's my B value. So that means from the center, I move up four and I move down four. So I would have co-vertices at zero comma negative four and at zero comma four. So like here and here. And then if I were to ask you to find the foci, well, you could do that too. The foci, remember your hyperbola opens towards the foci. It'll be inside the bowl. So it's gonna be left and right. So you could say that your foci is the C value. So it would be at negative two root five comma zero and at positive two root five comma zero. Now, if I ask you guys to find the asymptotes, okay, well, let's think about this for a second. I have an asymptote somewhere in here, right? And if it's the equation of a line, well, I have to figure out which equation I should use since I have a horizontal asymptote here. Since I have a horizontal transverse axis, my asymptote is going to be at y equals k plus or minus b value over a value times x minus h. So here we go, guys. y equals, what is the k part of my vertex? It's 0 plus or minus, what's the b value? 4 over the a value, which is 2, times x minus 0. You can simplify this a little more, say zero plus or minus two times x minus zero. 
You could even simplify this a little more and have just have plus or minus 2x, however you want to, but here's your asymptotes. Very simple once you find your a, b, and c. All right, it says put the equation in standard form here, find the asymptotes, all that good stuff. And it, it also says to graph. I'm not going to ask you guys to graph. But this is not in standard form. We can get it there. We know how to do this, guys, completing the square. We've done this a whole bunch of times, and you guys are getting really good at it. So let's keep our x's together and our y's together. So I have 4x squared plus 8x plus the box minus 3y squared. And I'm going to move this 16 over, and it becomes negative 16. All right. I need my a term, the number in front of x squared, I need it to be 1 in order to complete the square properly. So I'm going to take a 4 out, and then I'm left with x squared plus 2x plus the box minus 3y squared equals negative 16. So now when we complete the square, I'm going to bring down my 2. Well, 2 divided by 2 is 1, so I'm going to put a 1 here. So I know that my, <coughs> excuse me, my binomial will be x plus 1 quantity squared. Now remember, what you do to one side, you do to the other. I'm not just adding 1. I have to account for this 4 that I took out. So 4 times 1, I'm going to add 4 to this side. So I have 4 x plus 1 quantity squared. Then I have minus 3y squared. There's nothing to complete a square here because it's just the term y squared. There's no y to the first power. So I'm just going to leave this as minus 3y squared equals negative 12. Now you guys are saying, okay, we're kind of there, but we're kind of not. So now what do you think we should do? Well, I need this to be a 1. So what can I do? What can I divide everything by in order to make that a 1? I would divide everything by negative 12. So this becomes negative x plus 1 squared over 3. Negative divided by negative is a positive y squared over 4 equals negative divided by negative is a positive. So this looks really, really close to the equation of an ellipse that we want, but here is a problem. This needs to be a minus sign. So if you guys come to a situation like this, look, this is a positive term, y squared over 4. This is a negative. I can just flip-flop these two and rewrite this as y squared over 4 minus x plus 1 quantity squared over 3 equals 1. Now I have an equation of an ellipse in standard form, all right? This is a y, starts with y. That means this is a vertical hyperbola, right? That means it's going to open this way. So I can say, okay, well, my center, the center of my hyperbola is at h comma k. Well, my h value goes with x. It's gonna be, my center is gonna be at negative one. Remember, it's the opposite of what we think. What's being added or subtracted to y? zero so there's my center my a value well this is a squared so my a value is two this is my b squared value so my b value is the square root of three and if i needed to find c i would say okay c squared equals a squared plus b squared so i have four plus three so c squared equals seven so c would be the square root of seven Whoops, that should be a 7. And then if you guys were asked to find the asymptotes, okay? We just found our equation in standard form right here. Our asymptotes, well, this is a vertical. Since I have a vertical asymptote, I would use the equation y equals k plus or minus a over b times x minus h. So I have y equals the k value. This is my h. This is my k. The k value of my vertex is 0. So plus or minus a is 2 over b is the square root of 3 times x minus a negative 1 gives me plus 1. And there is the equation of my asymptote.